Hi everyone. Today we are going to see how to, how we are going to integrate IoT with MuleSoft. We'll go by step by step. Uh, we have a process to do it, and let's see how we are going to do. First things first. First, which, first thing which we need is we need to download the Raspberry OS because we have Raspberry Pi which needs an OS. So go to google.com and search for download Raspberry. Once you click on www.raspberrypi.org in going to downloads, you will find two OS. One is the Nodes and the other one is the Raspbian. We are going ahead with Raspbian OS. Just click on Raspbian OS and you can see there are multiple downloads. For this, we are going to download Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software. I am downloading the zip file and the download starts. It will take a while to download. It is of 2.5 GB. Once I downloaded, I can see, you can see here that I am, this image file is downloaded. You will, be, uh, you will be getting a download of a zip file, extract it, then you will see a disk image file. Further, the disk image file needs a software to write into our SD card. Now, if you can see, when we insert a SD card, for this we need at least a 16 GB of SD card free space. So, it's always better you have a 16 GB free SD card with you. Plug in the SD card and you can see, I have this OS already existed but I wanted it to be formatted. But you can see it shows only 200 or 252 MB. So even if you use the format which is present here, it will show only the 252 MB free space. So to format it properly, we need to download SD card formatter. Go ahead and open SD card formatter. And then automatically the folder will be selected and just click on the format. Then the SD card is formatted. Perfect. If you go ahead and see, the available free space will be shown as 14.58 MB. G. The next part is we need to download Win32 Disk Imager. This helps us to transfer the disk image file to copy from our system to SD card. If we open this image, this Win32 Disk Imager, you can see the device. G already selected which is nothing but our SD card and now select the image file which is already present in our downloads if you see here click on the disk image file open it then you can see the right option is enabled and it will be written into G drive just click on right and say S it will take a while you can see it, uh, estimation time is 8 minutes it will download, it will write from your local to your SD card. So, as it is approaching to complete switch process, just uh, you can see that you have downloaded the Raspbian OS, you have formatted the SD card, and you have unzipped the image file. Once this is completed, we shall add a SSH file in the SD card folder. You can see the write is successful. Go back to your folder and if you can see open the downloaded the copied version of the disk image file you can see. Create a new text file with name SSH. This helps in connectivity, connecting our Raspberry Pi with our laptop. That's it. Now you can unmount your SD card from your system and then we should start connecting to our laptop. Safely eject the SD card and then 
keep this SD card into your Raspberry Pi slot. Open the network and internet sharing center. Click on that. Scroll down. And you can see network and sharing center. Once you plug in your LAN cable, once you plug in your LAN cable from the Raspberry Pi to your laptop, there are two ways that you can connect your Raspberry Pi to your laptop. One is through HDMI cable, which doesn't require any LAN or Ethernet connection, or through LAN using Ethernet. So in this process we are going to use our LAN cable via Ethernet connection. If you can see, once the LAN is connected, there is an al already a connectivity in my laptop using Act Fibernet. Once you plug in your LAN, you can see an unidentified network shown below. You can see there is an unidentified network public network shown below. So now we need to share our internet which we are having to Raspberry Pi. For that click on the connections. Open this properties tab. Go to sharing. Make sure that these two boxes are checked and the internet should be highlighted automatically. You should need not do anything. Just click on OK. For me, it is already there. Now then, go click on the Ethernet. Go to Properties. Click on Internet Protocol version 4. Check that there is automatically the IP address automatically generated. There is no need for you to enter anything. This IP address we will be using to connect to a Raspberry Pi. This would be our host name or this would be our static IP address to connect to a Raspberry Pi. After everything, just click on OK once it is done. That's it. Now, go ahead and open open Xming. Xming is something which we use to see the UI part of our Raspberry Pi, the UI part of our Raspberry Pi. So please download Xming from the downloads. Now click on Putty. Putty is used to connect to our Raspberry Pi. I have the connection already there. You can see the host name is raspberrypi.mshome.net which is default name. Let me write some steps. Connect through Putty Raspberry Pi. Host name as raspberrypi.mshome.net. You can see the port is 22. Now go to the SSH tab, expand it, go to X11 and see that these are enabled and checked, and all these are automatically generated. Now go back to the session click on raspberry pi and open it you can see a warning where you can say s that's it you need to log in as a pi user the default user for raspberry pi is pi now it asks for the password and the default password is raspberry after hitting it you will come back here I'm just writing the username and password over here, the default which comes from the Raspbian OS. My username default is pi and the password by default is raspberry which we will be changing in future. It's always better to change your password for future products. Now, now write the command start lxde which will open your xming GUI. In 
this way we can see the UI part you can see there is SSH enabled because we have created a text file while writing it to the SD card this is the UI of Raspberry Pi the OS you can just open the browser as well you can create a shortcut for your terminal LX terminal which we use to write commands add to desktop you can see the browser opening now open the LX terminal and first things you need to do is type sudo space rasp pa iphone config make sure that rasp pi should, should not have any space in between so sudo space rasp pi iphone config you will get a dashboard where you can change your password select press enter again press enter and now change your password I have given my password your password won't be shown here because this is Linux we type the password your password is successfully changed press enter go down with your arrow buttons using down arrow and side arrow and click on finish now you can see your password is updated successfully next thing you need to do is you need to check the java version currently installed if you can see here by default we have java version 11.0 but i want to install java 8 version in my uh, raspbian os because i felt when we t when we have done this before we have some issues with uh, java 11 versions for permissions and all so now we are going ahead and removing the java 11 version which we got from raspbian os pre-installed and then we will be installing java 8 so to remove the java 11 version use this linux command sudo space apt get space purge and open ready key it will ask for s or no click on s this command is used to remove current java So click on Y so that this Java will be uninstalled. You can see that it is removing. Next, this command is used to install Java 8 version. Once the Java 11 is uninstalled, use sudo apt get install open jdk 8 hyphen jdk this is to install java 8 version you can see the java is uninstalled to check again java space hyphen version you can see no such file or directory now go ahead and install java 8 version copy the command press enter it says invalid operation that means my command is wrong I am missing something I am missing iPhone over there make sure that you use proper Linux commands so you can start you can see that it is starting downloaded click on Y say enter y type y and enter it so sometimes it takes time to download this java because we are downloading it from the command line though it is 25 mb it may sometimes takes more than 8 minutes depending on what your internet connectivity let's wait for it to download and see 99% it is unpacking it is updating and processing everything you can see that is done written over there 
Now go ahead and check the Java version, Java space hyphen version. You can see that Java 1.8 version is installed successfully. So this is the best way to download the Java version or it is the best way to remove the existing Java version. Just two commands, one to remove the existing Java version and another command to install it. Now, the next step is now, next, go ahead and open the browser in your Raspberry Pi and download Mule 4.2.2 standalone server. You can do this by running a Linux command as well, but uh, it is not necessary. You can open the Google Chrome and download the Mule runtime manually. We have 30 day free trial. Enter your first name and last name and complete the details and click on the download. It will start download. You can say though it is of 250 MB, but in this way the download gets completed soon. Meanwhile, go to the terminal back and click on sudo space su space iPhone. This will go to your root root user. Now we are going to create a user with name Mule so that all my mule soft applications or mule soft operations will be controlled only by one user mule soft rather than going ahead with pi user so this command is used to create a user called mule user adds space hyphen s space everything you can see the command over there now enter give the command PASSW password space mule that will ask for you to type the password, new password. Retype the password and the password is updated successfully. Now you have created a new user called mule. Now go ahead and create a new directory using command mkdir space home mule and also opt mule. This will create the directories. You can see we are choosing change owner command. Please follow these commands in the same way. You can see the download is still happening. If you can see into my folder section, my download is completed click on that and you can see show in folder the same how we see it in our windows os so my standalone is downloaded in downloads and go back now change the user to pi again su space pi it will go to pi user go to the root folder of pi now go to the folder of home pi downloads because you need to give permissions you can see it is highlighted in red that means we don't have permissions for that writing or executing permissions other than the pi user first things you need to do is unzip this mule double enterprise edition distribution standalone server you can use, use this command so you see that it is saying cannot find or open okay but uh, the thing is you need to use the command unzip space the folder name directly you can see it is unzipping so upon unsuc uh, upon successfully unzipping it just go to the downloads and see that there is a folder called new enterprise edition without zip this folder is nothing but which we have done after unzipping it. Now use the command cp copy space hyphen r copy the folder name paste it so you are basically moving this particular folder into opt hyphen mu which we have created for the user mu 
because I want all the files and things to be under mute. Now you can see here you are going to the user mule okay then down if you can see you are giving some permissions to it now we need to give all the permissions to execute or to run these files you are inside mule user now we are unzipping the zip file which we had already the same way which we have done you can see that there are permissions error permission denied error that's the reason what you need to do is use chmod777 that will give the access permission to the device okay Please follow this step step by step. LSLDR will give the list of files of present in that particular folder. Now go to Mule user and into OPT Mule folder, unzip it to start unzipping. You can ignore the previous step as well where we have unzipped this mule standalone server with PI user. You can do this with mule user. You can see the unzipping is successful and now you are in mule user. Just check that if it is unzipped or not you can see that there is a folder created. Now copy the name of that go into the folder you can see that there are many files and folders config file, bin file, apps file apps file is where we deploy our applications now we need some additional config files required to perform a successful deployment of our mule applications so these are the four commands I will be sharing these commands in the description part just copy those commands and execute them go ahead and go to cd space opt space mule folder paste the command it will start downloading a file give the other command it says no such file directory make sure that you are giving proper you can see my folder name of mule enterprise edition double e but here it shows just standalone so make sure you give proper commands I'll share these comments in my description. Copy them. Now you can see those files are present. Now copy this new enterprise standalone 4.2.2. Go inside it and see and go into the bin folder. If you go to the bin folder, you can see there is mule file dot patch and there is another mule file. So use vi which is used for visual editing. Scroll down and make sure that you are giving proper memory allocated. You need not change anything 
from Unified here because we have already downloaded the latest 4.2.2 version of Mule standalone runtime. We are good till now here. You can see here. Go to the PI user again and go to the mule user. Sorry, check for go to OPT and mule folder. You can see there are some files. Go to mule enterprise standalone folder, open it, and go to the config folder cd space conf and then you can see there are some con folders in that we are going to conf folder again check what are the files that are present in config folder there edit the wrapper config file to make some changes you can see scroll down where the memory allocation is given. You just scroll up. There we go. There is initial Java heap size and the, the initial minimum and maximum. Make it to 256 and 512 MB. Again, go to the folder. Go to the mule user. Take the password. And now, go to the mule folder. Mule standalone folder. See the space. Copy that particular folder name enter it and go to the bin folder you can see there is a mule file in the bin folder now once you hit dot slash mule the server gets started mule standalone runtime is getting deployed you can see it is launching. You can see it is deploying automatically. New runtime. You can see the status domain is deployed. In this way, it's very easy to deploy our application. We haven't deployed our application yet, but uh, the server is up and running. Now, there is an application already developed on my local Anypoint Studio. So, to transfer that application from my Windows OS to our Raspberry Pi, we will make use of WinSAP. So, if you can see here, I am opening WinSAP and giving my hostname as raspberrypi.ms.home.net and then I am clicking it. Click on the username PI. The username is PI and enter your password which you have changed earlier. And just click OK. You can see left hand is my Windows OS and right side is my downloads folder of Raspbian OS. This Raspbian temperature new iPhone 1.0.0 snapshot is my new application which is already deployed. I am copying that new application into my downloads folder you can see the transfers happen successfully the main part here is now go to the new tab we need to give necessary permissions to our new file to execute or run successfully so make sure go to the download folder and give necessary permissions to your 
new application job file. For that, use two commands chmod777 and give the file name and chmod a plus x. This will give execution permissions to the application. Then go to the mule user, enter the password. Copy this particular jar file. Next step is to copy this particular mule application, which is a jar file, to your mule standalone runtime apps folder. First, go to downloads, see whether this particular application is present or not. Now, copy this from your downloads as a mule user to OPT. If you go ahead and check, you can go to the mule standalone path and copy it from here OPT mule bin. State, remove bin and keep apps. Apps is the folder where you place your applications. If you see here, once the application is automatically placed in apps, as our Mule standalone runtime is up and running, the applications will start deploying automatically. Wait for it to deploy automatically. You need not do any special things over here. You can see the file is there in apps folder and you can see the application is getting started. It is starting to deploy. You can see here starting app raspberry temperature. You can see the app is started. Okay. If you go ahead you can see there is an anchor text file also created once the application is created in your apps folder that means your application is deployed successfully go ahead and run the application my application is running on localhost 8081 slash test I'm going to pass the number my mobile number When you hit the application, the internal Python scripts will be running. You can see that it in your console working temperature dot Python file is to sense the temperature it sensed, and then green light is light. I'll show that video to you. So in this way, we have successfully, you know, deployed our application and connected with our Raspberry Pi. Make sure that you have your Python files in your downloads folder because that's where we have given the path in your new application. You can see my Python scripts over there. I will share my Python scripts in the description and give all the necessary permissions that we have given before chmod triple seven and chmod a plus x for the files so that it it has all permissions to get executed. You can see here this is my uh, one of the python scripts which i used this is the 26th gipo pin gpio pin that i have used to connect it i'll share these details in my description you can see here i have received my message see the temperature is 22.687 degrees you can see in the database 22.562 can see the temperature details as you can see I have my all my python files after giving all my self permissions let me quickly explain you the new applications which I have developed so if you can see here I have I am taking my phone number into from the query parameter I'm setting that into a variable then I'm going to into I'm using a groovy script 
the execution scripting module go to scripting module use the groovy script where you will be placing your, placing your python file place over there that will run your python script where it will execute the temperature store the temperature in that variable and then if you can see you see here I am saving it in attributes.query params then I just try to open it you can see here my scripting module I have defined the command and I have given the path of my python script where it is going to sense the temperature so next after that save the temperature details that is coming from the python raspberry pi the sensor which you have used the, that is nothing but the payload dot input stream which has the temperature worst scenarios give the default value as 10 but payload dot input stream will give the temperature which is sensed now if you can see here we have used a twilio connector to send a message to your mobile number the twilio connector will ex expect a message to be in this kind of format with body from and to and then use as object with class org.mule.modules.twilio then send the message using twilio connector see the configuration of twilio connector which needs account SID create a twi twilio account first give the account SID username and password and then if after sec uh, sending your message to your mobile number successfully use the green light python script which will light the green light you can see the python script and then give a final success record message if if your message sending is failed go to the red light script in your on error continue and light the led light so finally this way we are connecting our raspberry pi to led lights the resistors the combination of pins and all i will be explaining that in the description part at what pins we need to place this temperature sensor if you can see over here this is our temperature sensor which is used to sense the temperature and this is our green light after successfully sending our message it will light and then on failure it will have a red light so if you can see here we are using the jumper wires to connect from our raspberry pi to the breadboard we use female to male male to male and uh, female to female jumper wires all those things will be mentioned and uh, that's it this is how we have integrated our iot with mulesoft it is very easy to deploy a mule application into the Raspbian OS. The thing you need to concentrate is make sure that you have a pre setup of Raspberry OS. We have seen how we have installed Java, how we have, we have installed mule standalone, and how we are giving necessary permissions to it. So, hope you will come up with new ideas and you do some innovative things. May I, I believe that this video will help you to do further experiments thank you all thanks once again all the things which i mentioned that i will be uh, providing in the description part will be provided with thank you